Welcome back guys, thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be covering the ball and chain flail. Now the question could be posed, is this a historically accurate representation of what a medieval ball and chain flail would have looked like? Well, the answer is no, it's not. Um, that's not the point. I'm not trying to make my weapons historically accurate for two main reasons. Okay, One is that if I was trying to make them historically accurate, I would be kind of limited in what I would be able to make. Right, because I would just be recreating something that has already been done. And I like to be creative and come up with my own designs. Okay, that's reason number one. Reason number two is that I cater to a very specific crowd, right? More of the fantasy world, like the gamers, the Comic-Con fanatics, you know, the LARP crowd, the Renaissance Fair crowd. You know, people who actually go out and attend these kind of conventions. And to the people who are more into this kind of fantasy world, um, historically accurate, nah, it can seem kind of boring. Okay, they're looking for big, flashy, extravagant, you know, looks cool, feels cool kind of a weapon. Um, so that's my reason for my not so historically accurate design. So don't get hung up on that. Okay, so let's get back to the flail. So how well does a ball and chain flail actually do in real combat? Well, it's really like any other weapon, okay? It really just comes down to how well the wielder has been trained to use it. Okay, for example, if I pick up a longbow for the first time and go into battle expecting to have any kind of success at all, you know, people are going to look at me and think I'm crazy because I haven't trained with a longbow, I don't know the techniques, and I haven't developed the skills to be able to use that weapon effectively. Okay, it's the same with the flail. Okay, it really comes down to training and practice. Alright, so let's take a little bit closer look at the flail. I'm going to give you some pros and cons, and so let's start with the downsides, okay? Con number one, um, it can be a little unpredictable, and I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by that. Okay, so I need a target and a sword. Okay, so with my sword, I can swing at this angle, with this amount of force, at this object, and I can predict pretty well how my weapon is going to respond to that impact, right? With the flail, it's a little different, okay? I can swing at the same angle, same amount of force, at the same object, and it's much less predictable of how my weapon is going to respond to the impact, okay? With the flail, it could bounce up, it could bounce down, you know, it could do a number of different things because the flail is not one solid weapon, right? With my sword, I know where the, the entirety of the weapon is at all times because it's solid. Because, you know, wherever my hand is, whatever I do with it, I can feel where the whole weapon is at all times based on what I feel in my hand, right? With the flail, because you've got this ball just kind of hanging out here doing its thing, um, you can't, it's, no, it's less predictable because you can't exactly tell, you know, where the whole thing is all the time. Um, and for that reason, um, I'm calling this a con because it's, a, it's kind of unpredictable that way. In particular, when you're striking an object, you don't know how the impact, you know, is going to, how your weapon is going to respond to that impact. Okay. Con number two um, is kind of similar. Overall, you know, the weapon can just kind of feel a little clumsy, again, because it's not solid. It's, you know, you've got this loose ball hanging out. You know, it's not, um, it's not one solid weapon. So, and overall, it can just kind of feel a little clumsy at first. Okay, but both of those two cons really can be overcome with training and experience with the weapon. Okay, so let's take a look at some pros. Okay, pro number one. Typically a ball and chain flail, this one is not. This one is meant to be a two-handed weapon, but pro number one, normally a flail, sorry, is a one-handed weapon, okay? So this one's got two, obviously. Um, there, I've made one like this, um, barbed wire and nails. You know, this, this is not, you know, a typical ball and chain flail, but um, they're typically they're, the, they're a one-handed weapon, so you could, I guess, if you wanted to have two flails, you know, dual wield, not probably very practical. Um, typically, 
it, it a, a flail would be paired up with a shield, okay? Because you can't really, you know, um, block or anything with the flail. It, it doesn't really work for that. Okay, so typically you would have a shield to defend yourself and the flail to strike. Okay, so for that reason, um, definitely a pro is that you can, it's a one-handed weapon, you can have a shield um, to defend yourself. Another pro um, is the centrifugal force that um, the flail works off of. Okay, so you've got your handle and you swing it, but at the end of your swing, this ball comes around with centrifugal force at such a rapid rate that you can get such a crazy amount of power with this thing. It's just phenomenal the amount of impact force you can create with a single strike. Okay, so that's a really big pro in my mind. Okay, and another pro is any flail, if it's designed right, um, is designed so that the, the user is not at risk of harming himself. Okay, a uh, two-handed weapon, you know, you've got your hands down here, your, the, the impact weight is not gonna, you know, hit your hand. You're not gonna get, you know, you're not gonna damage yourself that way. Um, now again, because it can feel kind of clumsy at first, you know, I could swing at this thing and be worried that at the end of my swing, when it hits that, oh, it's gonna box back and hit me. Well, no, it's not. Um, really, a uh, flail's designed so that the user is not, you know, at risk of injuring themselves. Um, so that's definitely another pro. All right, but enough talk about this weapon. Let's take it outside and do a little demonstration. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and remember to subscribe because I have lots more videos coming out soon and I will see you next time.